So in the Yoga Sutras, we learn that there are five kinds of knowing, which I'm going to be focusing on in this class that you're about to partake in. The recommended form of knowing is called pramana or clear perception. And one way to access clear perception is through direct experience, like having your practice time here just now. In this practice, you'll also see me work through the nervous system in a couple of different angles. And that's because I'm teaching a yoga and mental health training, a yoga psychology training, while I'm also teaching this class. So in the room are mental health and medical health providers and other yoga teacher training students in this course. What we're going to be looking at is when the nervous system escalates, it goes away from direct perception or clear perception. When it plummets, it also drops down from, retreats from, is within withdrawal mode, cannot access clear perception or direct experience. So you're going to hear me talk about those things as well as these five kinds of knowing. And without further ado, let's get into the class. However, one more reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'd love to see you here again. All right. Thanks. See you in class. Welcome to this practice. So we'll be diving into understanding a few more of the Yoga Sutras as we're walking this stepping stone path in the Yoga Sutras. In the class that happened yesterday, the class before this one, it was Yoga Sutras 1.1 to 1.3. And that video will be available on YouTube. It'll again end up getting posted up here. So today I'd like to explore then what we learn about the five kinds of knowing, which comes in the next few yoga sutras. The statement is made, there are five kinds of knowing, these are what they're called, and this is how they work. So in English, these five kinds of knowing are clear perception, misperception, memory, fantasy, and deep sleep. Right, so when we think about clear perception, there are three ways to come to clear perception. One is by direct experience. Another is from a knowledgeable authority on a subject of expertise that they have. So we could have our direct experience as a student. We also may have a teacher or a wisdom holder that we go to for this clear perception about the way things are. And the third way of having clear perception is by seeing the wisdom lived out in somebody's life, like seeing how it's transformed somebody's understanding or presence or perception. So that when they're seeing you, they're seeing you clearly. When you're seeing them, you have a sense like, oh, they see life clearly. That, that would be the case. You often have that experience when you're in a recovery program, particularly in the 12 step communities where new people come into the program they don't yet perhaps have direct experience of recovery. There are some teachings available and that big book has lasted for a long time. And then there are people whose sobriety is demonstrating that the path works for them. And so in that model, you can kind of see that in a contemporary way where this clear perception is possible. Now, hopefully the aspirant of yoga or the person seeking recovery also gets to have direct experience, not only a knowledgeable guide and the evidence in people's lives, but also direct experience in their own life too. And that's why we practice our yoga together like this, to have that direct experience opportunity. So it's my aim this morning to teach a class that helps you to rest in that direct experience and to know it. And what I mean by direct experience in this case is that sense of the presence the palpable grace that you already are and that everyone is. I like to say everyone and everything. It's in the hummingbird, in the tulip, in the neighbor, in the boss, in yourself, in your most dear and dear, in the people you call strangers, in the caterpillar, in the ocean, everything. So that presence or that... Um, palpable grace, having a direct experience of that is considered one of the most powerful ways to pierce through what I like to call the mental mumbo jumbo. For those of you who know the model of the five koshas, that is anamaya, pranamaya, manamaya, vignanamaya, and anandamaya kosha, the mental mumbo jumbo tends to hover in the middle of those koshas, manamaya kosha, and is broadcasting itself out into your pranamaya kosha and your anamaya kosha. It's it's feeding the news to those layers of your body. 
And this direct experience pierces through all of those layers of the koshas and brings you back to Anandamaya kosha, back home, where there's a felt sense of belonging and unconditional welcome, unconditional regard. Like there's no one having the sense of that because your the, the thing you think of as you <laughs> is temporarily dissolved and there's a sense of it, but there isn't you sensing that. It's like you disappear in an appropriate and healthful way and you're resting in that which is holding you right now, but which we often don't realize is here for us. So that's our journey this morning. Let's hope for the best and uh, please take a comfortable seat we'll get underway. You can rest your hands in your lap, close your eyes. Allow yourself to drop in. Let the words flow through you to be absorbed by you. You don't have to cognitively understand everything that I just said. Allow it to flow through you, your body and your breath, your mind, your cells. And welcome your breath to deepen. In terms of deepening, we mean dropping down into the pelvic basin. Allow the breath to drop down. And welcome both your inhale and your exhale to begin in that lower pelvic region, pelvic floor, low, low abdomen. And as the breath is invited by you to drop in, so you're relaxing unnecessary tension, now start partnering with the in-breath and the out-breath to make each of them a little bit longer and a little bit smoother. Without striving, without domineering, invite the inhale to be a little longer. Tiny pause at the top of the inhale. Exhale a little longer. A tiny pause at the bottom of the exhale. And then please raise your hands to your heart. Let's embark on our practice. May we know that which is most deeply true. May we not be bedazzled by or seduced by that which is untrue. Om Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, 
Sat Kamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Kamaya Mrityodma Amritam Kamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodma Amritam Gamaya Shanti, 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 Hari Om, Shri Guru Pyo Namaha, Hari Om. With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands, please, and open your eyes. So often what is circulating in us are the other four kinds of knowing, and those are misperception, memory, fantasy, and deep sleep, sometimes referred to as ignorance in that case, because when we're deeply asleep to what we need to know, we are not knowing it. Um, so five kinds of knowing. And to abate the difficulties that those four kinds of knowing bring to us the um misperception you know projection transference misunderstanding misreading somebody's facial affect uh, past trauma filtering in past impressions coming to help us determine and interpret something but often incorrectly that creates a lot of human dynamics right um memory you know living in the past holding on to the past feeling that the past should be capable of being repeated now or unresolved past things that keep hindering us to move forward in our lives. Fantasy, like daydreaming, wanting something different, being in a realm of like, oh, imagining, but never really manifesting, primarily being distracted by fantasy, fantasy. And then deep sleep in the form of not paying attention, not being a participant in your own life, you know, being in a way um, under the radar screen of your own life. So those four things have adverse influences on our body and our mind. And so one way that we dissipate the um, outcome of that, or we abate the residue of that is by using physical asana practice. And that can help us to come to clear perception through direct experience, because we've gotten the mucky muck out of the way. And maybe you don't have a lot of mucky muck today, and maybe somebody else in this class does. So we're going to address that mucky muck stuff. Let's start by taking the arms wide. This will be the in-breath. And then exhale, cross your right elbow over your left and squeeze the elbows down. Inhale, raise both elbows. Exhale, release your arms down, palms facing out. Inhale, raise up. Exhale, cross your left elbow over your right. Inhale, raise your elbows up, little thoracic extension. And exhale, release the arms down, palms facing out. Again, please inhale. Use the full length of the inhale to reach into this horizon. Exhale. Complete the exhale. Inhale, raise your elbows, open the upper back and heart. Exhale, release the arms down, relax your shoulders down, palms facing out. Inhale. And exhale, left arm over the right. Inhale, elbows up. Exhale. Exhale. 
and then pause and notice if any mucky muck is lessened. And then both arms forward, please, and bring your right elbow over your left. And then wrap the arms around each other so that your palms end up facing one another. So this hand position, the palms face together. Sometimes people get it confused and their hands look like this. The palms are facing from here. So turn your palms out and then wrap them so the palms face together. They are wrapped like a rope. And for some of us, it's not possible to wrap the wrists and the hands. In that case, you could hold on to your yoga strap to bring the hands closer. Let's bring the elbows up to the height of the shoulders. Lengthen your elbows slightly forward. And then breathe in. And as you exhale, squeeze the elbows down. Reach the crown of your skull up. As you inhale, raise your elbows up. A little bit of thoracic extension again. Exhale, squeeze down. Keep the crown of your skull rising and the torso stays upright. Okay, inhale to rise. Exhale, squeeze. And now one more time. Inhale, rise up. And exhale to release. Let your arms come out to the side. Notice the circulation coming into your hands. Okay, raise your arms up and let's bring the left elbow over the right. Again, weave the arms. Yes. And hold a yoga strap if need be. It's not possible for everybody's hands to meet here and that's going to be okay. okay. Inhale, raise the elbows up a little bit above the horizon. And exhale to squeeze down. Inhale up. Exhale, squeeze. At your own pace, do that for one more breath cycle. And then release your hands. Let's do arms down and palms face out again. Notice the circulation flowing down your arms into your fingers and thumbs. You wrap your right arm around behind the small of your back and hold your left elbow if you're able to. And then you can secure your left hand on your in your lap. If you cannot reach your elbow, it is okay. Maybe your elbow is too small or your fingers are short or the shoulder is tight, whatever it might be, you know, it's okay. So in that case, you could use a yoga strap around your left arm to hold with your right hand. And then as you've got your left hand fixed here, roll the right shoulder back and let's Tip the left ear down towards your left shoulder. Bring your chin a little bit towards your right collarbone. And when you exhale, tone the front of the abdomen and also the front of your throat. And on this inhale, open the throat by moving your chin away from your right collarbone while keeping your head on the diagonal. And then exhale, tone your lower belly, bring your chin towards your right collarbone, tone your throat. And inhale to open, taking your time. You're giving some goodness right now to your neck and your throat, some of the muscles that react to stress, like upper trapezius, uh, scalenes. You're also giving your vagus nerve a little massage here as you operate this through the throat. In addition, this is also could be helpful for your thyroid gland, so positively influencing the endocrine system. And one more time, squeeze your chin towards your right collarbone. Allow your head to float back up to center. 
Release your right arm down. Let's do it again, palms face out and notice the circulation going down your right arm primarily. And then wrap your left arm around behind the small of your back. Hold your right elbow if you can reach it. You can rest your right hand in your lap there. Sh shrug your left shoulder slightly up and then back. And then tip your right ear down towards your right shoulder. And bring your chin a little bit towards your collarbone to start. And with an exhale, tone your lower belly, tone your throat as you squeeze your chin a little closer to your left collarbone. And then inhale to open. And exhale to squeeze. Inhale to open. So sometimes we call this soaking and squeezing. That is on the inhale when your body's opening, there's a like a soaking or a bathing in circulation or prana or breath. On the exhale, you're doing a little squeeze, like when you squeeze the sponge in the sink. And one more time, squeeze. And then allow your head to float up to center. Release your left hand, both hands down, palms facing out. Okay, and then releasing that practice. So I sometimes will use a phrase with my community called uh, soak, rinse, squeeze, repeat. Soak, rinse, squeeze, repeat. And that means like as we're soaking in the yoga practices, as we're rinsing and cleansing the body, as we're squeezing, we then repeat that just like on a, a dishwasher cycle or something. Because time and again, we are rinsing out those problematic thoughts or troublesome um, things that have a hold on our nervous system. And we're not rinsing them out or you know shunning them. We're not like shooing them out. We do wanna understand what is helpful for our transformation and trauma resolution, for example. We wanna understand how we got to be where we are today with certain thoughts and behaviors and to grow through those processes. But often what we're navigating is the accumulation of the residue of stress today and today and today on top of residue, 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 residue. So we're trying to wash some of that away so that we can understand what might lie more deeply that's activating this ongoing accumulation of stress. So what lies more deeply can be discovered as we soak, rinse, squeeze, repeat. Soak, rinse, squeeze, repeat. Okay, let's take a blanket to the floor, please. I'm gonna ask you to unfold this blanket. And we are doing neck and shoulders right now. We're gonna do the whole body, but we're gonna focus on the neck and shoulders for the time being. Let's take this blanket long and fold it length to length. And once you get that length, place it down your yoga mat like this and sit in front of your blanket, but not on it. We used this practice in yesterday's class as well. So when you lie back, yesterday you used this as a restorative practice. Today, we're gonna to use it as a neck and throat and vagus vagal tone practice, a vagus nerve practice. So lift your head and make a curl only under your neck, a little curl of the blanket just under your neck. Check that each arm can go overhead. You don't have anything obstructing you and you are aware of the obstacles nearby. <laughs> okay, and check that I got clearance there, yeah. All right, so let's take the right arm overhead to start this practice here. And as you reach with your right arm, turn your palm to face the center line. And then rotate your head down to your left. Let it, in a way, fall off the blanket if it's going to. It's not gonna fall all the way to the floor, but allow your head to be relaxed down to the left. And breathe in. And then exhale, bring your head to center, raise both arms straight up towards the ceiling. Okay, switch the arms, take your left arm overhead, 
Let the head roll down to your right. Turn your left palm to face the midline. And then inhale, raise both arms up to center like you're sleepwalking. Okay, so this position, when the arms are up, when the nose is pointing up, when your head is centered, this will be where we're, when I say, let's come to center. And then you're gonna be scissoring, right arm, left arm, and head. And in this return, we center, and then we'll scissor on the other side. Okay, so this is an important synchronizing practice. And the, the scissoring of the arms is a cross crawl, left brain, right brain practice. The movement of the throat is for your vagus nerve. That can be really helpful for your mental well being too. So let's inhale when we're centered. Exhale, right arm, left arm, scissor, rotate your head to the left. Inhale to center. Exhale, scissor, roll your head to the right. Use it the full length of the exhale to come into your end range of movement. Inhale to center. Use the entire inhale to arrive. Exhale, scissor. Continue at the pace of your breath and your body. The curl of blanket under your neck should not be so large that you find this to be really difficult, but it ought to be large enough that you're also massaging the occipital ridge as you go side to side. When you turn your head left or right, there's gonna be a, a tender point perhaps under your ear near to the base of the skull. And so massaging across that line at the base of the skull, we want that to ultimately feel comforting. And once more, inhale, raise your arms up to center. And then exhale, open your arms out to the side. Relax your mind and your body and you can ask for clear perception through direct experience. Can my mucky muck fade a bit? Maybe mental mumbo jumbo quiet down. Okay, so while we're here now, let's rotate your head down to your right side. And using your left arm, what you could do if you'd like is take a block to support your left elbow if you feel like you're gonna need that, so something like this. We're gonna use the left wrist to gently weight. I'm sorry, the right wrist, I'm not mirroring you. <laughs> we're gonna use the right wrist to gently weight the left temple. So your head gets a little bit more rotation to your right. And once that feels like it's in a stable and you know easeful place, we're gonna snow angel the right arm overhead towards the wall that's past your yoga mat. With an exhale, snow angel your right arm down, pointing towards your feet. With a snow angel, take your right arm out to the side Reach it up towards the wall that's at the back of your mat. And then snow angel a couple times more. and release your right arm, roll your head to center. Notice the difference between your right and left neck, throat, the sides of your face. Okay. And then rotate your head down to your left. You could put a block under your left elbow if you'd like, or you can weight your left wrist on your right temple and just be thoughtful about how much weight you put there. Open the right arm out to the side. 
And then snow angel your right arm towards the back of your room. And follow that snow angel, bring your right arm down alongside your torso. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, lowering down. And by up and down, I mean head to toe, not ceiling to floor. So once more, inhale, raise your right arm overhead, snow angel style. And then exhale, lower your right arm down, snow angel style. And rotate your head back to center. And again, notice if the mucky muck is fading. And then please roll to your side and come up to sitting. Watch out for your glasses. So there's one more practice I'd like us to do in this sort of neck and shoulder realm and then see, we'll go into larger physical practice after this. But if you notice, like how does your mind feel just in releasing some of the physical tension associated with the neck and shoulders, upper back, chest, heart, and your head or your face? Okay, what is that like? So what I'm gonna ask us to do now is lie on your stomach. In a moment, you're gonna have the elbows out in front and the hand at the side of the face. We also did this practice in yesterday's sequence. So let's come down onto the stomach. When you come down, place your elbows under your shoulders. So you're in Sphinx pose to start. And then walk your elbows forward, place the hand at the side of your face. Might be helpful to take off your glasses. So the thumbs and the pad of the thumb can support the hinge of the jaw. The index fingers are behind your ears and the other three fingers are in front of the ears. And as you gently lift up on your, your head, the base of your skull lifts away from the uppermost vertebrae. Allow the upper back to also relax into a little bit of extension, spinal extension. And then let's all take notice of how your body is able to breathe here. It's possible that you're going to have access to a deeper, more full inhalation. And you might even be able to feel that inhalation touching the lower belly, the mid torso, the upper chest and heart, and not only the front body, but also your back body. Start to rotate your head very slightly side to side as if your nose were like a weather vane. And there's just a very gentle breeze. To help your head go side to side, I'd like you to think of when you're rotating your head to your right, it's that your left hand is helping to bring your left ear forward. When you rotate your head to your left, the right hand helps to bring your right ear forward. And go one more time to each side, depending on where you began. You'll end either left side or right side. And come back to center. Walk your elbows back to a place beneath your shoulders. Interlace your fingers. Tuck your toes under. Lift your hips. Walk the knees in until you're in table pose on the Elbows, forearms and hands, knees, shins and feet. And then inhale, press into cat pose from here. On the exhale, tone your lower belly inward and upward towards the back of your waist. As you inhale, change into cow pose. Slide the pubic bone back, bring your chest and heart forward, open your throat. 
And then exhale and come back into cat pose. We're gonna stay for the inhale here. And now exhale, come into cow pose. Take the sitting bones back, slide the pubic bone back, bring your chest and heart forward. Let's stay here for the inhale. Exhale again to cat pose. We're gonna stay for the inhalation as well, like a parachute on the back of the body. And then exhale and reach back to child's pose. Let's keep the arms out in front. And if you wouldn't mind, please bring your palms together like a prayer. And then I'd like you to tip that prayer so your fingertips go down towards the floor. And you'll be lifting the sides of your wrists and the sides of your forearms, the upper arms, and the inner edge of the armpits as well. So we're stretching into the back hemisphere of the body and the back of the lungs. Reach your wrists forward as you press your fingers down. And welcome the breath geographically into your lower back, mid back, the sides of the torso, the kidneys, the back of your heart, the back of your lungs. Now root down into your hips towards your heels and inhale, rise up to arrow pose. And then exhale, release your arms and simply come to sit in what we call Zazen or sometimes it's called a thunderbolt pose, uh, which is, we say in Sanskrit, Vajrasana. Check and see if any of the mucky muck is being cleared. You can open your eyes as you're ready to. So you'll notice that the practices we've done so far were seated and then um, supine and then prone. So we haven't stood up yet, right? And that isn't particularly uh, to demonstrate that yoga can be done all on the floor, though it can be, but it's to help people who are in our yoga and mental health training, yoga psychology training, to see that there are things you can do seated. And when your client feels ready to or interested in, there are things that they could do reclined, um, front or back. And also sometimes we're gonna have clients for whom they have limited mobility for getting up and down off the floor. So they might do it on a bed, for example, or if you have a massage table that you work on with people uh, or a wide enough platform that somebody perhaps might be transferring from a wheelchair into um, a circumstance where they have enough support to do some of these things. Of course, if it's the lower body that's paralyzed, you stabilize and then ask them to get some support moving in the upper body in this realm up in here. We're also using this realm today because I do want to address the vagus nerve and vagal tone. So you just went through a process of that. You also just recalibrated your nervous system from sympathetic activation, if you came in that way, down towards a more homeostatic, parasympathetic hum. And that name for that parasympathetic nervous system is now called ventral vagal parasympathetic nervous system versus just parasympathetic nervous system because it's no longer that there's just sympathetic and parasympathetic, accelerator and brake, but there is sympathetic, parasympathetic, and dorsal vagal parasympathetic, which is a huge suppression of the nervous system. Right? This is an escalation, homeostasis, depression. We aren't likely to have clear perception when we're escalated, nor when we're in the suppression. Clear perception is going to come when we're in this ventral vagal mode. So it's really important that medical providers, mental health or physical health or yoga teachers, anybody in a service role like this, we nourish our ventral vagal parasympathetic nervous system to be of service to others. Of course, we're also nourishing ourselves. We gain some benefit from it, but we're also of service to others. Okay, so now I'd like you to come up to standing, please. 
And this is where it's going to be helpful to have two yoga blocks. Let's put those at the top of your yoga mat. <clears throat> I often have to place my glass where my cats will not drink out of my water glass. Today I have to place it where I'm not gonna knock it over when I'm doing standing practice. So turn to face the front of your yoga mat, whatever you consider that to be. You know, if you can, face to the east. This happens to be east, I'm facing east. So if you can face east, that's the direction that we face when we practice yoga asana, because we're practicing at sunrise in India. We're practicing facing the sunrise. You join your palms together at your heart. Stand firmly in your heels and your toes. Allow your leg muscles to tone in an appropriate way so that you feel stable, but not tense. And with an inhalation, let's take the hands down, turn your palms out and rise up. And then exhale, bend your knees, come into Utkatasana, the chair pose. Inhale, rise up, root down through your tailbone, open your chest and your heart and your throat. Exhale, bow forward, keep your heels over your, I'm uh, sorry, your hips over your heels. So you're bowing forward over stable legs. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale for a deep bow towards your legs. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, bend your knees, step your left toes straight back. Inhale, rise up using the length and the cadence of your breath to come up. Exhale, bend your elbows so your hands go down behind your head. Go ahead and look straight ahead. Inhale, raise your hands, look up. Exhale, bend your elbows, gaze forward. Inhale, raise your hands, look up. And exhale, float the arms wide, come down slowly. And let's place both hands on the block, step backwards to plank pose. and then reach backwards to downward facing dog pose. Okay, breathing in. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale to rise, sweep the arms slowly out to the side, lift up through your chest and your heart and your gaze. Exhale, bend your elbows, look forward. Inhale, raise up and look up. Exhale, bend the elbows, gaze forward. And one more time, look up and raise up. And then exhale, float the arms wide, bow forward, touch the two blocks, and let's again step backwards to plank pose. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in. And exhale, step forward with one foot and then with your second foot and come into Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Notice if any further mental mumbo jumbo quiets down. We're gonna repeat that. So let's inhale, smooth and slow. Exhale, chair pose. Your gaze can go down and slightly forward on the floor. Inhale, rise up and let's look up. Yeah. 
exhale, Uttanasana. Again, keep your hips stable over your heels. You bow over a stable foundation. Inhale, glide forward. Okay, exhale, left toes straight back. Inhale to rise. Aim the arms up overhead like an arrow. You're, you're searching for direct experience, clear perception. Exhale, bend the elbows. Take your gaze forward. Let's keep the hands now at the back of the head so your palms are together like a prayer position. Place the heels of the hands at the base of your skull or you know the sides of your wrists are there. And as you press your head back into your hands gently, raise your heart and your elbows up. Keep the tailbone grounded, right hip, right leg, right heel grounded. And then as you next inhale, reach both arms straight up towards the ceiling and look up. And exhale, sweep your arms wide. Come slowly down to touch both blocks and inhale to plank pose. Exhale, reach back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale to rise. On the exhale, bend your elbows and place your hands, so they're pointing down behind you. Lift up with your rib cage, the heart, your elbows. Press your head gently back into your hands as you bring your gaze just above the horizon. To any place in your body that feels like a bit of limited movement, or maybe the energy gets stuck, send the breath into that area and see if you can have a dialogue with that part of your body. You're not asking for that thing to change, but rather that you could get to know it or in a way you can welcome it as information. And with your next inhale, raise your arms overhead and look up. And then exhale, sweep your arms wide, come forward and down. And inhale, step your right foot forward. And exhale for a deep bow over the legs. Inhale, rise up, arms wide. Come up at your own pace, look up at the top. And then exhale, hands to your heart. Close your eyes for a moment and come into mountain pose. Just standing at ease in your mountain pose. And allow the mental mumbo jumbo or the physical mucky muck to fade just as it would very naturally like fog dissipates when the light starts shining through it. And then you can open your eyes as you're ready to. So part of that sequence, what you're doing with your hands, they're down there behind your head. You know, they're upside down, like, like this, upside down. And we're looking to open the upper chest, the heart, and the collarbones, partly because when we get into misperception and we're pulled down in that dorsal vagal place, or we get into deep sleep or withdrawal, we go down, down, down. We lose energy. We lose confidence. We lose vibrancy we lose optimism that we could experience 
clear perception and direct experience. We may even from that place see other people's lives looking amazing and believe that it's possible for them. We may even have access to the teachings and think, oh yeah, for other people that will work. But there can be a sense that it's not going to work for us. So this is a way of energizing or raising up that optimism. Somebody else might toggle up a little high. So their energy is like, it's up more like anxiety, more like a sympathetic arousal. And so they're up above the horizon, right? And they may see that it's possible for other people to be grounded or calm or, you know, peaceful, but they find for themselves that they're not resting in a place of contentment or a different kind of confidence, like a slower confidence versus the dorsal vagal person may need to have a little bit of oomph to get the confidence coming up. That sympathetic activation may need to have a kind of um, inner slower confidence that isn't about proving oneself to be able to be like authorized somehow to have the clear perception or the direct experience. So this was an energizing sequence for this Surya Namaskar. I'd like to now show you what it would be like if you were doing it when someone has come in and there's more um, upward energy there, they're more rajasic. How do you use this practice to help um, sculpt or help them refine to come back in to a quieter place? So notice that those were back bends that we were doing there. And now we're going to change the shape of the spine a little bit. So come back to the top of your yoga mat. Bring your palms together. Stand firmly in your feet, your legs, your hips. And when you connect to the next inhale, sweep your hands down and simply wide like a T. And then exhale and bow forward and come into Uttanasana. Inhale, lift the base of your skull and your spine, but gaze back between your feet. Exhale for a deep bow over the legs. Bend your knees. Take the left toes straight back. Turn your left heel in to be on the line of your right heel. And then bow over your right leg. Whatever amount your hamstrings can greet you with, allow yourself to bow over your right thigh. Let's gaze back towards the left heel as a place for visual and mental focus. And as you gaze there, allow your breathing to become smooth and uninterrupted by thoughts. You can concentrate on creating a more elegant, smooth, and balanced breath, keeping your eyes and your mind focused at your left heel. It's a place to park the part of the mind that goes into random thoughts and, and daydreams and fantasies. Or the part of the mind that goes into judgment, comparison, all the things. And with a smooth inhalation, raise your torso just enough to sense where your blocks are. If you're still using them, if you're not, place your hands up on your blocks and let's bend the right knee deeply and step forward with the left foot. Please come into Uttanasana. And then inhale, lift the base of your skull, slide forward through your spine, keep your gaze down. Bend both knees, take the right toes back, Pivot your right heel, lengthen back with your left hip, and walk your hands down. Now your hands could stay on the blocks, of course, but you can also bring them down to the floor. You could have the blocks tall, medium, small. You could have your left knee a little bit bent if you need to. The shape of the spine is more important than the length of your hamstrings here. So allow the spine to come into a bit of flexion. This is a forward bend. Gaze at your right heel. So your mind and your eyes have a place to land. Encourage your breathing to become smoother, more steady, more elegant.
And then raise your torso up and you could place your hands back on your blocks if you need to use them or you were on the floor, transition into them. And then let's step backwards to downward facing dog pose, please. Gaze back between your heels. Find a place for your eyes to rest as you focus on a smoother, more elegant breath. And then inhale, slide forward to plank pose. Gaze down between your thumbs and your hands. And exhale, touch your knees down to the floor. Point the toes and let's reach back to child's pose. Bring one block into position to support your forehead. As your hips drop down towards your heels, let your body breathe itself. So you're going to witness that process. It's not up to you right now. The breath can come and go. And then walk your hands back towards your knees and rise up to kneeling. And return to Vajrasana or Zazen, which we were doing before. And let's just take notice, in relatively few minutes, you were able to reorient your nervous system by the choice of physical poses and by the way you would practice with your mind or your breathing. Notice what it's like now. And see if perhaps there's a little sliver of or a glimpse into that quieter, more clear, open mind. The part of your mind that is not caught up in your narrative about yourself. Okay, so something that you might have discovered then is that what we choose to practice matters because we're moving prana through the body. We're influencing the nervous system. We're, you know, in this position here, we're opening up dhyana vayu, udana vayu, prana vayu. In the forward bend you were just doing, you're orienting more towards apana vayu, the flexion of the abdomen, samana vayu. So you're moving prana around the body to help balance that. And if somebody comes in to see us and they're prana or their nervous system are weighed down, we want to find a way to help meet them there, to help them understand why they go there, but also to give them the tools to come back up to a baseline that they're comfortable with in their window of tolerance, as we would say. If someone's coming in quite like escalated or tend to be ungrounded or it's hard to get their life together, lots of distractions and upheavals, we want to be able to help them be understood here, have a felt sense of no rejection, no judgment, but some consideration. And how can they have the skills and the tools to come down in a gentle way so it doesn't require a collapse to medicate this? We're not going back and forth between these two states. We get to come into some harmony here in the middle. I hope that makes sense. So now I'd like you to take these two blocks in an unusual way. I'm gonna lie on my back and show it to you. And then you can explore it for yourself. And when you lie down, we'll put the two blocks in a little diagonal like that, a little triangle shape. And each of the blocks is gonna be supporting the edge of your sacrum. So if you were to pick up your feet from there, you're gonna feel that the block is right behind the trochanter. The greater trochanter is right here, the large hip bone. And the block edge, the beveled edge goes near to the edge of the sacrum. Once you have a sense that you're there, and I'd like you to touch your feet down to the floor and relax for a few moments. Let the upper back and even the solar plexus soften towards the floor. So this has a kind of 
a little bit of a rounded spine, you know, in, in this flexion in the upper back, chest and heart spine. Notice that your breathing will hopefully naturally find its way down into the pelvic basin. And then inhale, raise your thighs up to be vertical to the hip joints. And exhale, squeeze your knees slowly towards your chest. You are going to be massaging the sides of the sacrum with those two blocks. Inhale the knees up to vertical. And exhale, squeeze your knees in towards your chest and your heart. Inhale to vertical. This is really giving space for the inhale to find its way to the low belly. And on the exhale, when you're squeezing, it's like a gravity supported exhale squeeze. So we're soaking, rinsing, squeezing, repeating. Inhale. Exhale. And once more, inhale. And exhale. And this time we're gonna keep the right knee in snugly towards the chest and we'll take the left leg out. A little bit of an opening for the left psoas. You could clasp your hands behind your right thigh if you'd like to lengthen through your left leg. This is also called apanasana, meaning we're moving up on a value. Apanasana, right knee to chest. And then we do both knees to the chest. So let's bring that one back in. And then taking the right leg out straight. You might have one psoas that's a little more snug than the other, a little tighter than the other. It's common and it's okay, but if this is the easeful side, you can give appreciation. If it's the difficult or you know, slightly tighter side, also give appreciation. Mm -hmm. And then float your right knee back up to center, so both knees to the chest. Hold the knees behind, between the hamstrings and the calves. And then we're gonna to touch the feet down to the floor. Hello, Nakula, good timing. Now let's put the soles of the feet together and take the blocks out to support the knees. Hi, honey. Now, a little treatment you can do for the nervous system is to take this long folded blanket and place it down so it's over the feet in the center line of the body. And then it comes up to the solar plexus. It's just kind of calming for the nervous system right through here, but we can keep the heart and the chest available. You open the arms so your palms go face up. And if you prefer palms face down, that's gonna be more grounding. And some people enjoy putting the palms face down on the abdomen, which is also a nice gesture of like, you know, um, self respect or self care. Allow yourself to start relaxing very deeply. Remember I said that in yoga, it's more like subtraction 
We're subtracting the things that obscure our view. So this is the subtraction pose. <laughs> this is where you're letting some things go. And also where your body is recalibrating the prana, your nervous system, metabolism, all these things. From your body to release, release, release any unnecessary tension, any holding patterns, and invite your mind to release unnecessary or unhelpful thoughts. Allow your body to get heavier and heavier against the ground. Limp with relaxation. As you continue to let go, welcome the possibility that your mind becomes more and more clear.
welcome the process of surrender for another minute or so. Not even deciding what gets surrendered, but allowing it to happen on your behalf. And allowing the mind to be simple and not to acquire a bunch of stuff. Rest another minute in to the depth beneath all narrative, beneath all the sensation, that layer deeper than news, dates, and time, deeper than deep. And now we shall gently wiggle the fingers and the toes. And as you do that, then lift your knees off of the sides of the blocks and we'll take them out straight for the legs. This is your standard rustic Shavasana now. And you can circle the ankles, circle your wrists, wake yourself up. Bend your knees, we'll put the blocks aside and roll to your side on your way back up to sitting. Reach for your blanket to sit on for meditation. Turn to your seat. Do make it comfortable and nourishing for yourself. So here you are. Hopefully you are the more relaxed and nourished version of yourself right now. Press the hands. You can do palms face down in the lap for something which is grounding or palms face up for feeling more receptive. to help integrate the nervous system and the teachings that we had and as a little um, chaperone like an usher to bring us to that place of even more clear perception we're going to use nadi shodhana to so bring your right hand up and close the right nostril with the right thumb you'll do the 
left nostril with the ring finger and the pinky. So starting with, close the right nostril high up on the nose where the bone becomes cartilage. Inhale, left side only. And then you'll close the left nostril high up where the bone becomes cartilage and exhale right side only. And then inhaling on the right side to continue, you change the nostril after the inhalation. And go smoothly and slowly for inhale and exhale. Now see if you can balance the length of your inhale with the length of your exhale. Even if you only get one round of Nadi Shodhana where those breath cycles are balanced, see if you can do that from inhale to exhale, inhale to exhale. Two breath cycles is one round of Nadi Shodhana. And then relax both hands back to your lap. And we'll sit quietly and check and see if there's a feeling of connection to that direct experience of yoga. And that would mean knowing yourself as that larger presence that is holding everything and everyone. Direct experience might also simply mean a sense of peace or tranquility, being tangled up in your narrative self that has resolved, and you can rest in your larger loving inner self.
when you rest in that sense of yoga or unity with all that is, you may still have some thoughts coming through the sky of the mind, like a bird in flight. That won't disqualify you from experiencing yoga. You rest in this inner sense of yoga. My hope is that you're resting there. And I'll start to imagine how would you move about your day without disconnecting from this source. And how will you remind yourself that this, which you are tapping into, is also in everyone and everything else. You know, they may not see it in themselves nor in you, but we have this honor of seeing it in everything and everyone. Let's please raise the hands to the heart. Thank you so much for sharing this time and for your shared practice with me and with your community. Thanks, everyone. Namaste. Thank you very much for sharing your practice time with me and with the community. I hope this has been helpful to you and that you get to experience clear perception through your direct experience. If you have questions about yoga teacher training, always leave those in the comments below or check the links in the description of this video as well. As always, if you've got questions or comments at all, leave those down below the video. I'll come back to you for those. And if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to like the video if you found that it was effective for you, because that'll give it more access into the um, internet highways and byways, and other people may be able to find this practice to have it be helpful to them as well. So thank you, everyone. Namaste.